Do you know what the Bible said even about riches? It said, I wish above all things that thou mightest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered. That means your transformation is superior to your riches. Your transformation is superior to your opportunities. Your transformation is superior to your wealth. If you have not attained transformation, you are not permitted to possess anything. That thing will become your God. And that's why many are worshipping pleasure. Many are worshipping money. Many are worshipping men. Because these things have more power on their soul than the word of God. This is why many are sick. This is why many are dying. Because they have the word much more than they have light. Light is deficient in them. And so when the crisis of this world comes, which is in the spirit representative of darkness, it super, it super imposes over them and dominates them. And so you find somebody is a professor, but he has tumor in his brain. He doesn't know what to do. How did you grow to the rank of a professor? You know physics so much, you are called a professor of physics and you are a baby in light. What kind of training have you exposed yourself to? That means your growth process is a distorted process. If you have studied anything on earth to the level that you are called a professor, then you should be a master in the realm of light. But you see, because we don't prioritize the pursuit of light, we can be professors mentally, but our body has not yet been exposed to light. And so when cancer comes, cancer will destroy somebody who studied biology, who studied mathematics for 35 years. And that person is stranded. He doesn't know what to do. When a demon comes, a demon can possess somebody who is a millionaire. And that demon can wreck his life. How did you study money? How did you study economics to the point where you are able to be a millionaire? And you don't know what to do in life to address a demon. It means your growth was a distorted growth. There's nothing wrong in growing in knowledge to becoming a professor. There's nothing wrong in growing in life to becoming a millionaire. But he said, I wish above all things that thou mightest prosper and be in health even as your soul so your soul should prosper beyond any other form of prosperity and so when a man does not apprehend the world the truths of the world when a man does not engage light constantly even though he's rising the devil is just watching the reason the devil is looking at him is because the evil day has not yet come leave him so long as he's not growing in light it's not a threat so long as he's not growing in truth it's not a threat let's face those who are making progress first we can come to him any day we can come for him any day and the guy after 30 years of labor they send an apprentice witch and they end his story in a second because in the natural he has grown but in the spirit is a babe sometimes when the devil doesn't even have your time yet he said let us plant an alarm system in his heart and then they put heart palpitation they put high blood pressure they put something there now that one should be a body let him be carrying it until we have his time and they just put an alarm system frustrating your existence because they are facing very serious people they know there's an intercessor somewhere who will not come out of his room that intercessor is affecting their signal that intercessor is interrupting their operation and so that intercessor is where they are dealing now so they can mobilize 1000 demons to stop that intercessor from praying because they don't have time to allocate demons to everybody they mount all of them on the intercessor because if that intercessor is praying there there will be an intervention for the businessman there will be an intervention for the preacher and so 1000 demons are laboring on one man and they just put high blood pressure on another man to be wasting his life they don't have time for him here because devils know what matters only men don't know what matters only men are pursuing things in the whole universes of God only men are pursuing things Angels are seeking to please him. Demons are seeking to destroy his agenda. They are pursuing things that have eternal value. Only men are pursuing mundane things. So the word we have sent, we have been sent to to colonize has become our distraction. The word we are sent to to take over has become our master. And so people are mastered by things. Somebody is mastered by a movie. Somebody is mastered by football. Somebody is mastered. People are mastered by things that have no eternal value. And he cannot help himself. He will lie down there like in the grave and watch movies for 12 months. He will lie down there, argue football from one season to another season. There's nothing wrong in watching football, but football cannot master you. 
there is another syllable that you were invited to study how much truth is in your spirit how much light do you carry because that is what make you an ambassador to your generation and the reason we are sick the reason we are helpless is because we have not yet been saturated with truth and light when you are saturated and you appear demons we know there are three major places where the bible made a statement that looks like a reference and i will show you how wisdom holds all things together in genesis chapter one he said in the beginning now here's what wisdom was saying he said i stood before the beginning he said in genesis chapter one in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth so wisdom is telling you there is a realm that exists before what you call beginning i was before beginning began so when you see in the beginning you may think he's talking about time he's talking about a place in wisdom because where time began from is a place inside wisdom wisdom holds time so when he said in genesis chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning he was talking to you about a depth in wisdom so time is a depth in wisdom because it was wisdom that framed time if that depth of wisdom is removed time will vanish the reason you don't have time in eternity is because that depth was not allowed to participate in eternity so what you call time is a place it's just like you are studying wisdom maybe from foundation to top and he said in the beginning god created and that realm is here so what you call time is actually a depth within the context of wisdom so you are the one calling it time wisdom is seeing it as a place and so genesis chapter one is a place in wisdom where the power to create dwells so every time creation takes place you have gone back to genesis one and so when you find people who tap into inspiration to invent things they are not working with time they are working with a place and so when god wants to get make you an inventor or a creator what god does is that he goes back to that depth of wisdom if you travel back there you become a creator because creation it did not begin in time creation is a place in wisdom and so when a man begin to journey in wisdom and he comes to that place God in the beginning creation we begin so the power to create is a depth within wisdom and so when man travels with God what he's doing is that he is navigating the different quarters of wisdom now I hope you know that John came in John chapter 1 verse 1 and John 2 spoke about his own beginning so what these guys are talking about is not time the beginning of John chapter 1 verse 1 is older than the beginning of Genesis chapter 1 because in beginning of John chapter 1 verse 1 he said in the beginning was the word so John's own definition of beginning is a person Moses's definition of beginning is a creation so why Moses was defining beginning as an activity John was defining defining beginning as a person so when you go to the beginning you will meet different things there is a defeat there is a beginning that is an activity and there's a beginning that is a person the beginning that is a person is older than the beginning that is a creation you know jesus was speaking in matthew 19 verse 8 hear what jesus said they were arguing about marriage hey. and jesus looked at them and said in the beginning it was not so so there are many beginnings in the spirit so the beginning jesus was talking about there is where laws are made the reason you say let a woman be divorced if you fornicate is because of your flesh your fall he said there's a place in wisdom where laws are created so there is a place where the oracles of god come from within wisdom it's also called in the beginning so when you say in the beginning you are looking at different shades of wisdom there's a beginning that is god there's a beginning that is an activity of creation there's a divinity a beginning that is a place where the laws of god derive from so if you go to the beginning where the laws of god dwell you will become the law that's where moses went to on mount sinai the reason he was able to come down with the ten commandments was because he went to another beginning the beginning where the oracles of god were and so moses did not just come with the law the bible said in first corinthians chapter 3 verse 15 he said when moses is read so moses himself became the law because when you go there you become it i'm trying to tell you the power of wisdom in transforming you if you go to where creation is you become a creator 
if you go to where the laws dwell you become a law and everywhere you stand you are a reference to your generation mm. every verse of scripture is not just a dimension of wisdom is the fullness of the wisdom of god when you catch it it can bring you life it can bring you power it can bring you promotion it can bring you anything it thinks you are seeking but a generation have not explored the world but you know what the apostles did they sat on the world they studied the world they knew the world they encountered the world and they were able to write the world john said that which was from the beginning which our eyes have seen our ears have heard our hands have handled of the word of life we heard of it we saw it we handled it now we can communicate it and so anybody who wants to live victoriously must begin to catch the world when you catch the world different dimensions of wisdom begins to crystallize your health can change your status can change your possibilities can change so when you find people going through issues the issues are not a problem it is a lack of wisdom that is revealed through their crisis and so the first thing we must understand tonight is the excellency of wisdom why am i saying this because i want to show you some wisdom from scripture some wisdom from scripture but if i don't tell you the power the authority and the excellency of wisdom when i'm saying it you can say i've heard it before it's not how many times you heard it have you caught it if you don't catch it you can't manifest it most of the things that you make for your deliverance you have heard it before but you have never caught it but in it is the power for your salvation in it is the key for your liberty but have you caught it those distractions those lost is death you don't need them there is something in god that our generation must fight to behold he said we all with open faces beholding us in the glass the glory of the lord we are changed i don't know what you are looking for trust me tonight god will heal you trust me tonight god will touch you but that touch is an invitation to a realm the healing is the smallest thing see he called it the children's bread there are higher things locked up in god that a generation has been invited to seek and those are the things he invites you to you ready to journey with the lord you know the early church they called john john the divine because of how much of god he carried because of the glory that he was able to embody they called him john the divine that was his name in the early church because they looked at the man and the man literally became a god in the flesh the question is if these dimensions exist in god and men have touched them why are we the way we are if a man can touch god so much carry god so much that he attempts to write a book and the book is not a literature the book is to x-ray god like the anatomy of god to show you who god is if a man can dare to attempt to talk about god and make you feel he can reveal god to you because he knows god and this knowledge he has is not just theory this knowledge has fleshed on him so much that a generation calls him God, John the Divine. Why are you like this? Why are we where we are? That our gospel today now is an attempt to preach what society will accept. Our gospel today is an attempt to make people live cautious and safe. Our gospel today is an attempt to say things that will be morally or societally, socially correct. We are not able to explore so much of god it looks almost as if what the early church knew and walked in we have lost it because the things they touch we cannot even scratch them how can jesus look at the people and tell them if you drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt you and today we are masters of teaching people how to take supplements we are masters of teaching people how to survive by human standard i'm not saying there's anything wrong with these things but where is our heritage what was jesus handing to us that we have not found that rather we are beginning to receive counsels from people who studied in the laboratory in order to live our lives how can we then become a wonder to our generation what was in the heart of god when he began to create man is it a being that the devil should molest is it a being that should function like a slave of time is it a being that should function like a slave of the systems of this world did god create a slave for the devil what was god planning 
when he began creation in the first place are we the reflection of what god took his time to make or there is something we have not apprehended and we are not troubled or bothered about apprehending what is it that god had in mind before he took his time to sit down and formulate you and i that it looks as if the devil is even the one manifesting himself the most in us the devil has cancer he's looking for where to offload it he looks for a man the devil has lost he's looking for where to offload it he looks for a man the devil has paid he's looking for where to offload it he looks for a man whereas god has many burdens few men are able to host it god has many agenda many purposes only few men are able to receive it did god create us for satan did god create us to be used of satan this service is not just a service where you come to receive a miracle this is a service you come to find out who you are in god and begin to manifest it but you see a generation is not angry we have mastered how to manage this bodily life we have mastered how to service this life and so you know what happens when one man catches reality he becomes a god and then millions of people gather around him there is no glory there if you like stand cast demons from ten thousand people there's no glory there if you like stand have a healing line and lay hands on hundred people and all of them are healed there's no glory there if you like be generous and be a philanthropist and give money to every poor people there's no glory there you know when glory happens when you come to the church and there's no sick person you ask them who is sick here nobody's sick sickness can't come here when you come to a church and you ask them who is in need of direction everybody know where they are going when you sit with them they will tell you God told me two weeks ago that on the 20th of June, I am going here. I will do this in the, on the 21st of July. I'm going here. In August, I'm going here. You will know that these ones have matured in glory. These ones have ascended to their realm and God can entrust them with things. But you see, because we don't want people to grow, we now create a doctrine around what we have known for the past 30 years, for the past 20 years, for the past 10 years, and we keep recycling it. But nobody can push into God. Nobody can press into God. Nobody can host God and express God. And so we live normal, talking big about a God that we don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh. And he showed me he said see what john g Lake said you know what he said he said taking taking drugs and allowing yourself to be treated by a doctor is like a doctor he said because you have allowed something else to possess your body so it's chloroquine now that brings vitality to you it's the same as taking morphine to be excited so any state you want your body to go to you need a chemical to bring you to that state. He says like adultery. The body of man was created to be possessed only by the Holy Ghost. You hear John Chile carried virus in his hand and he died. You say, you too, you can't. It's not anointing. It's revelation. It's intimacy. It's depth of reality. You can't teach that today. You can't teach it. You try. People will go out of zeal and they will die. Because this is not something to come and boast. There is a place he has brought his body to. There are hours he exposes his body to glory. And so there is so much glory on his life that he can, the propensities in the body has ascended. On the strength of that, there is as much glory in his body that as it is in his spirit. Because that's how Jesus lived. Jesus' spirit was divine. His soul was divine. His body was divine. And the calling that we have is to manifest divinity in every quarter. But you see, this church of number this church of excitement, this church that does not expose people to the rigor of intimacy can never come there. 
and so we will remain in teaching supplements exercises in order to live like god and i'm not saying anything is wrong with it but i'm saying there are higher realms of experiences why have we allowed ourselves to be trapped in this world john had to begin to learn god afresh in the spirit to bring us dimensions that cannot be written dimensions that cannot be trapped dimensions that cannot be spoken about in fact there was a place where he entered in the spirit and he heard the voice of the seven thunders he wanted to write and they said don't write this this one is for travelers if you cannot journey you can't know this this one is not for those who read books this one is for those who can pay the price to journey in intimacy because what ranks men in the realm of god is the quality of light they have seen what ranks men in the realm of god is the depth where they have journeyed to and everything god provides for us here is an attempt to woo us into himself because there is more in god that cannot be written when the bible said you have come to mount zion the city of the living god it's another kind of beginning because mount zion was not created it's the dwelling of god so there's a beginning where god lives that's where the convergence of immortals take place every being that is created must travel back to that beginning where god dwells if it will be part of god's purpose if you have not gone there you cannot handle or lead the purposes of god you know people stand up and start doing things they don't know why it fails it fails because it's not rooted in wisdom if you don't go to the beginning where creation is you can't create anything you can only photocopy things and if you try to create it will be a failed project if you don't go to the beginning where the laws of god dwells your or your words can't carry authority it can't carry power your words cannot become a law to a generation if you don't go to the beginning where the immortals are summoned you can't have a purpose in god you will only follow those who have gone there so when moses climbed horeb in exodus chapter 3 he did not climb the physical mountain he came to where purposes are given that is another beginning so wisdom is the key for victorious living and you know what jesus did for us he simplified wisdom and made them capsules so every word in scripture is a capsule of wisdom you can carry one verse of the bible if your faith is able to interact with it that can become a realm that can become god that can become power that can become anything because the scriptures therefore have become a congregation of the dimensions of wisdom there is a scripture that will come alive in your spirit that scripture will take you to the beginning that represents creation and then suddenly you find yourself you hear what the woman said she said her word came this woman had been working for more than 10 years without promotion but her word came the moment her word came it didn't matter the bureaucracy for promotion that word came with the promotion and so those who are in the office they have no choice but to sign the document so you can be sleeping you will wake up you will not be able to sleep the first thing in the morning you will go to the office and sign the promotion because when the word came it came with the power to promote her and so whoever it is who is there if you don't want to promote her you'll be kicked away that's why her boss was replaced because the word for the promotion came this boss does not want to align so he can't sit there the boss had to be replaced for somebody else who will obey the word to obey it this is wisdom at work I want to say this so that every verse of scripture will take a new look when you approach it we don't know the power and the authority of the wisdom of God and so when God speaks we trivialize it and the Bible said the word spoken to us was the same spoken to them he said but it did not profit them they trivialized it they didn't mix it with faith you will begin to honor reverence and appreciate the word of God if you understand the power and the excellency of divine wisdom if you want your soul and your body to function at the frequency of divinity you must expose it continually to truth and to light and that one he said it will be your responsibility to help you walk with God and so the summary of our walk on earth and our life on earth is transformation and transubstantiation life on earth has nothing to do with getting a job you get a job because you are going to represent god on that corridor but if you have not contacted god 
enough to show God to the world. What you need to be doing is to be seeking God, not to be looking for a job. I know this one sounds barbaric, but this is what life is about. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If you have not found the kingdom, you can't seek any other thing. Seek first because the reason God can send you into a job, the reason God can send you to a market is because you have attained some measure of transformation. So when you come there, the truths that have transformed you, you can usher that corridor to it. When you have encountered light, the measure of light you carry, you will bring it there. But many have not found God. They are seeking other things. And so their life becomes one level of corruption to another level of corruption. They don't know that man's preoccupation is transformation and transfiguration. Transformation and transfiguration. Searching God through his word and searching God in the spirit. You contact truth in the word and you contact light in the spirit. If you have not caught God, trust me, when you find the word, you will lose your soul. If you have not caught God, that job you are looking for, get it and see how God diminishes on your inside. And you will not know the effect now until you get to eternity. Am I saying you shouldn't get a job? No. Am I saying you shouldn't start a business? No. But I am saying there are priorities in light. That it is your encounter with God that precedes every other thing you are doing. And in case you didn't know this and you have known it, now you make God your priority. So that by all means, you begin to know God more than you know any other thing. Because if we keep gathering Sunday to Sunday and Christians are lining up to receive healings, then there's something wrong. We are supposed to be the light of the world. We are supposed to be the salt of the earth. We are supposed to be the hope of our generation. But today, it is the people trained from Harvard, from Oxford, that are even remedying our crisis. If doctors, if doctors are to vacate the world today, in one week, millions of people will die. Millions. If doctors, doctors, doctors who read books that were taught by human philosophy and knowledge, if they leave this world today, if you say no more practice of medicine, in one week, millions of people will die and most of them will be Christians. And so the question is, are we the hope of the world? Or are the people trained by the world our hope? In Exodus 23 verse 25 he said you shall serve the Lord your God he shall bless thy bread and thy water he shall remove sickness from the midst of thee and the people were serving God they were serving God because they needed healing they were praying because they needed healing they were sowing their seeds because they needed healing and God now came further and he said he was wounded for your transgression he was bruised for your iniquities the chastisement of your peace was upon him by his stripes he were healed he took them from one level of intimacy to another. At first, they thought service was about receiving something from God. He now went further and told them, this thing is not about receiving something. He said, you don't need to do anything to be healed. He was wounded for your transgression. He was bruised for your iniquity. The chastisement of your peace was upon him. By his stripes, you were healed. So when I called you to serve me, it's not so I can bless your bread and your water. I can bless your bread and your water without you serving me. After all, the rain and the sun falls both on the good and the evil. I said that to get your attention. But what I'm calling you into is more than bread and water. And then he went further and he said, if that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he will quicken your mortal body. So you now know where God was going. The attempt was for the spirit to enter you. 
was for you to become one with the spirit was for the spirit to become your reality your pursuit should become the spirit and he said when that happen, happens you don't need to pray for healing anymore you know what he says as you are engaging the spirit he said the spirit knows how to quicken your body so your body naturally is ascended beyond the level of sickness so i am inviting you to something why have we become so much like the ordinary in fact people who don't know god are more healthy and more successful than most believers what has gone wrong the devil truncated the project and so wisdom went to work again he said what i wanted to design cannot be seen wisdom went to work again and this time around wisdom opened up three things there's something called regeneration there's something called transformation and there's something called transubstantiation in regeneration wisdom say what you need to do for your spirit to become divine is to be joined to the lord he said whoever is born of god so a new kind of bet was reintroduced into equation bet was no longer biological alone he said now when you accept christ he says something happens in your spirit a new spirit is born and that spirit is not just born he said that spirit is permanently joined to the lord and so your spirit becomes divine and he said the holy ghost seals the boundary of that spirit so much so that there can be no corruption according to ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. so when you accept christ a new spirit is born that spirit by wisdom is joined to the lord to keep it divine and he said that the holy ghost seals that spirit this is why many don't have infirmity of the spirit because it is secured but wisdom said there's another layer he said the soul must be transformed it is spirit that bears spirit but when it comes to the soul the soul needs truth continually because it is truth that will transform the soul and then when it comes to the body the body needs light and so why you need spirit for your spirit to be born and for your spirit to become divine because it's not only Jesus that carries light. He said, Jesus we know. He said, Paul we know. Who are you? Jesus is generous. He shares his light. He shares his dimension. But it's for only those who we seek him. It's for only those who we draw to him. It's for only those who we come near. Because the moment light appears, your crisis, they break. Why do you think you come for service? One word. People's situation turn around. Because the circumstances of life cannot withstand truth. The circumstances of life cannot withstand light. We are not on your job. We don't go to your office with you. Why do we speak and things change on your job? Because of the truth that we carry. And you don't have to depend on the apostle to keep talking. When you catch it for yourself, something will begin to change. And so while you are walking into your office, you are walking there and your words are going ahead of you. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Job said, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secrets of God was upon my tabernacle, he said, by light I walk through darkness. The psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, thou art with me. He said, thou preparest the table for me in the presence of my enemies. So your enemies can be present, you will still prosper. You don't prosper because God killed your enemies. You prosper because you have truth. You prosper because you have light. They can gang up. He said, surely they will gather. He said, but it's not with me. Surely they will gather. See, when we tell you to pursue light, oh, that's where your victory lies. There is something wisdom has put in light. There is something wisdom has put in truth. That when you are transformed, you are authorized. That when you are flooded with light, you are empowered. And that empowerment can shift systems on your account but you see many are not laboring there if you will make up your mind and say lord show me thy light show me thy light show me thy light see the way god begins is that he first of all ends your affliction to show you the excellency of wisdom and when he ends your affliction then he invites you to walk with him he invites you did you not see jesus he walked the earth for three and a half years the multitude came to him he was healing them because god will first of all deal with your affliction when he's done then he now invites you and tell you this light that broke your affliction is a realm come and journey when he breaks your affliction then he tells you this truth 
that change your story is a realm come and walk in it if you walk in it you will discover it's not just about victory in the natural world it's about thrones it's about dominions it's about ranking it's about realms in zion and so you begin to climb from one level of glory to another the 12 disciples climbed to a realm and jesus told them verily verily i say unto you he said at the regeneration you will sit with me on 12 thrones to judge the 12 tribes of israel so where they went to in light they had become judges they were no ordinary men anymore they will sit with jesus to judge men when you begin to journey in light then you will discover that it's a realm it's a realm and everything of god is there and so the man was created to def to define and to reflect god the moment the devil knew it he knew there was a problem if this one comes out god doesn't need to show up anymore when he shows up god has shown up when he appears god has appeared i was teaching you about faith last week and i told you there are two kinds of faith there is the abrahamic faith the abrahamic faith is for the man that functions with the consciousness of the body he trusts god to intervene but i said there is the god kind of faith that doesn't trust god to intervene he appears in the place of god jesus said when you see a mountain don't talk to god about it you command the mountain the mountain will hear you like he hears god the mountain will obey you like he obeys god because you are a reflection a visible reflection of the invincible god so when you talk god talks and jesus speaking in luke 10 16 he said whoever hears you hears me there is a dimension in you that carries my fullness so much so that when you talk is the voice of god creation we hear when you speak is the voice of god creation we hear but you need to bring the body under subjection so that the spirit can take over if the spirit does not take over then divinity cannot be seen through you this is why we have reduced our reality to seeking healing to seeking prophetic direction to seeking intervention i'm not saying they are wrong but i'm saying there's a realm higher there's a realm you get to where you don't need healing because life has flown from your spirit too much to dominate your body for any sickness to survive there there is a realm you get to where you don't need prophetic direction because you are living from the realm of god you are seen from the realm of god that's where god wants us to get to he provided healing he provided giftings he provided intervention because we need to grow from somewhere but we cannot remain there we cannot remain there we must come to that point where we expose our body to glory until god flows out of us if god does not flow out of us our generation cannot see god no matter how intelligent our preachings are no matter how eloquent our messages are today people labor to preach intelligent messages people labor to say things that are scholarly correct people labor to say things that are intelligent and god is asking i want one man to show me i want one man when god sent many prophets who were preaching messages and the word will not change he sent his son one man came with the body and the manifestation of god until today the word has not recovered God is still asking that question. When you go on your job, will you only preach a message or you will show them divinity? When you go to the market, will you only preach a message or you will show them divinity? You come to the office, you say God is powerful. They have malaria, you have malaria. They are trusting on salary, you are trusting on salary. They are sick, you are sick. And then you are telling them, they are asking you, which God is powerful? Okay, let's join you and do religion. But what we are looking for, you don't have it imagine what happens when you get to your job and everybody has covid but you alone don't have and then you tell them touch me don't worry when you touch me covid knows covid knows and they touch you they are healed they will ask you which god do you serve imagine if you go on your job and then salary is stopped but supernaturally you are sustained and you are living as if salary is not what preserves you the people will ask you who are you which god are you serving? that's when you preach a message Jesus didn't tell us to go and preach messages and do signs. He sent us to do signs so that we can preach messages. I'm telling you this so you will know that what you need is not an anointing oil poured on you. It is for babes. When you mature, you begin to crave for something more. Because there is such a thing called the transfiguration of the body. When you mature, you begin to crave for something deeper. Because something can happen to your body and cancer can stay there. Kind of body are we wearing bodies that demons manipulate that's not the body you are supposed to reflect there is a glory that is locked on your inside 
Your body is waiting to host it. Host it. It was Pastor Dunlap that said, the Holy Ghost does not live in your spirit. The Bible said your body is the temple. Your body. Your body. There is something about this body and glory. And the Bible said Moses walked into it. And he said at 120, he said his strength did not go down. His eyes were not abated. There is no such thing as wearing a glass. There's no such thing about weaknesses. Caleb said, 40 years ago, you gave me this mountain. He said, give it to me now. I will take it. I know you think by time, my strength will go down. But there is a technology. to host God you were created to manifest God you were created to reveal God to your generation and as you make that your preoccupation sicknesses pains death and all the evil that men suffers you will stop suffering from it because that was not what God planned to do you were created to actually live above it you were created to live above the realm of sickness above the realm of poverty but you fell below that realm. So God was wooing you to himself. Tonight, there is a call. There is a call for those who want to apprehend truth and who wants to walk in light. You will tell yourself, the world has distracted me enough. Oh, I have become a victim because I went the way of the world. Sickness was not my problem. Poverty was not my problem. My turning away from God was my problem. And tonight, I want to reconnect with God vitally. Not just to come out and give my heart to Christ, but to live for him and to live for him only. And as you do that, the glory of God will begin to break out of your spirit like you have never seen. You will not just live above sickness, you will become a conductor of eternal life. So much so that when you touch people, sickness in them will die. You will not just only prosper, but your words will carry people's seasons. That when you speak, you can awaken the season of a man. Because these are the realms. God has invited you to. This is our calling. This is who we are. We are not ordinary. We are a wonder to our generation. But the degree to which we are a wonder is the degree to which we host him and the degree to which we manifest him. This is the excellency of wisdom. One breaks into your soul through the word of truth. Another breaks into your soul as you engage God in the spirit. Can you lift your hands toward heaven? And make a demand tonight. Lord, I seek you and you alone tonight. That's all the prayer. I seek you and you alone tonight. I seek you and you alone tonight. I live for you and for you only. And see how the wonders of God will break out of your life. Ah. 